equal but different is what became the core of my belief. Because once I told myself I am equal, it really didn't matter what you told me. It didn't matter that you said you can't sit here because we are the wrong color. Uh, we can't do your hair because this is a white salon. So when I got an opportunity to pursue another childhood dream, one of them being, a, being able to get a doctorate after getting my medical degree, uh, I had to find something that spoke to the core of who I am because gender just addresses only part of the issue or the problem that we have globally, but especially in this country, but also race and social class. And if you read the book, especially the section that is addressed by Sisonke, you'll actually see how she unpacks class. If you're in Robben Island, you are a certain class. If you are in exile, you are a certain class. So we've just increased the number of classes that we have in this country. And each of those classes has a connotation as to how much access you have to, to power, how much access you have to lucrative deals. When I took this journey, one of the things that informed the methodology that I was going to use uh, when I did the study was a, I used to be a member of Business Women Association and they used to have these presentations where they would give a census report on a, how many women are actually CEOs of the JSC listed companies. Later on, they included the state-owned enterprise companies and so forth. And each time I went there, Obviously, you get discouraged because this number doesn't change. If it changes, it goes down. But I always had a question as to, I wonder what stories these women that we see in numbers would tell. People think the gender thing is a woman's thing, you know? And it's so not. It's great for us to have the women forums where we actually pamper each other, support each other, share our problems and stuff, but we're not going to change the dynamic from those mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter where you look, whether it's academia, it's business, whatever sector of society, men lead. And if men lead and leadership is everything as we know, they have the answer. We need to have these conversations with men. Men have to realize that it's not a favor for women to have an equal society. Yeah. It's actually good for the economy. It's good for the communities. It's good for their daughters, their granddaughters, and everyone else that is important in their lives. And we need to have them alongside us fighting for this equality. Mm -hmm. Why did I include Cyril in this book? I included Cyril because as I was talking to these women, they were talking about the different men that had empowered them. That is by no means a reflection of the lack of support that women intend to offer. It's just because men are so many, they've been at it forever and they are many in number. Mm -hmm. So I then listened, quite a few of the women that I interviewed, some didn't make it to the book because they decided not to actually have their names there, out there. Mm -hmm. But when you have a big battle like we have, mm -hmm. the gender issue is huge. Mm -hmm. You combine gender with race, then it's actually even bigger. Uh, you actually want to have as many people to support you as possible. Sometimes it doesn't matter what their motivation is, as long as the result is actually what you want to achieve. Why do I have a man in the book? Because if we are to have this change, we need men. Absolutely. And we need to understand the psyche of the men that believe in the change, mm -hmm. uh, which is why you're here, Dion. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other one is Sir Philip Hampton. When I joined the board of Anglo PLC, uh, I actually served with, uh, say, uh, Philip Hampton. And I know, you know when you work together, you know more or less what drives people, what's important to people. And I know uh, Sir Philip Hampton really doesn't care about equity. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised when he took up the position uh, to chair the UK initiative 
uh, to increase the number of women mm. uh, as a, in the executive space. I wanted to understand why, you know? Because, as I say, if you are to win this battle, mm. we need all the soldiers that we can canvass, mm. you know? And he, he actually explains in the book why. Mm. So I needed that voice.